Hello and welcome. I am Scarperlock and this is City of Heroes. We are with a level 36 character, Liberty Lass, who has 4.3 million XP earned. About 300,000 to go to get to level 37. I think we might get there if we finish the story arc today, but I don't know how close we are. We might be getting pretty close because she's telling me uh, to, uh, what's her name, Colleen Nelson, that we need friends. So the immortal guy who brought, fought the Path of the Dark in the 20s, well, after you res rescued him, he kept following the case. Uh, he's deep underground. The council has the seed, the seed of the dark. And uh, here's the last location. And you're going to need help. Well, we're not going to need help. But we probably need some different inspirations. So let's take a trip back to the base. And we can buy them from our resident nurses. Um, and then we'll head off. This might be the final mission. If it is, we're going to need to do some more missions to get to level 37. Um, and I will do that, and maybe we'll do a little bit of flashback just to get to level 37. You might see that, and then I'll do some more flashbacks off screen, and then um, and then I'll bring you back when we're post level 37 and doing the next story arc. Let's get our accuracy and get triple lux and at level 37 i think we are also as i've said once we have our enhancements set up and everything we're also going to move our um difficulty up to plus two and just see how we do the other thing i want to do is see if we have any enhancements we can make what do we need we need uh damage accuracy is that it? Damage, accuracy, healing, and resistance, it looks like. Well, there's accuracy. Level 40, we can't use it yet, but we can go ahead and make it. And resist damage, again, that's a level 40. We need runes. So let's wander over, see if we have a rune. I don't know if that's yellow or white. Yep, oh, there we got one. Let's grab two, because I don't remember how many we need. Back over here. And we can make that one. So they're just going to be there until we hit level 37. We're just going to go put them over here. We have a, Do we have a couple others? Oh, we also have the, the endurance modification too. That's level 35. Do we need that one? We do. Well, guys, I totally forgot we had that. Well, let's, uh, let's fix it up. We'll pull this out of here. Oh, we just delete it. <laughs> What we, hang on, what am I doing here? Pull it out. There we go. I, I don't know why I tried to pull it into the slot. And then we'll go ahead and slap this up there. So at least we got one of them done. We also have a couple of set IOs in here. We have Kismet or something. Yep. And it looked like we can make a couple of other set enhancements. Let's make a few. This one is Sniper. We don't need that. Harmonized Healing. I mean, you know, Healing, yeah, let's go ahead. And then Springfoot is a jump. We don't need that. But we might at some point want the healing thing. I doubt it, but yeah, whatever. We can also, you know, when we make our alt characters and stuff, so our Phoenix can, can come in here and grab stuff or any other, you know, we'll alt invite our next character. And that character will have enhancements that he or she can grab as well. So now we are going to go to Talos Island, my favorite zone. And... Start the mission. And guys, as we go, I have a Deadlands story for you. We ran our, it turns out, final session of the Blood Drive today. So uh, Blood Drive is a railroady campaign for new, new characters, novice characters. We started out with brand new characters. And you go from Texas to Wyoming in a weird west horror parody if you want to call it that of the book lonesome dove and we've gone all through the adventures and what you're doing is you're getting to dirtwater wyoming which is supposed to be in sweetwater county but i moved it to uinta county because it's the same county as headstone hill which is the adventure of the horrid headstone hill the campaign which i thought we might want to do afterwards 
And I've been asking my players all along, do you want to stay on the blood drive? When you get to Dirtwater, you can stay and work for Bill Sutter, the guy who owns the herd, and you can help him in his range war against the other big ranch, uh, which is an, an evil ranch, and Sutter's good. Right. And they said they wanted to stay on it because they wanted to see how things end. And so my best friend wanted to change characters. The other players were going to stay. In particular, the new girl and the girl from Finland were going to keep their characters. And then um, the guy who's playing the gunslinger was saying, because of the way things had worked out with his gunslinger and because he was interested in, in mad science, and he was going to change his gunslinger to be a mad scientist, but then he thought that's not really going to fit the character because you got to have high smarts, and he's not that smart uh, in character. He said, maybe I'll make up a mad scientist and you know we can sort of swap it out. So... We had two characters that were going to swap out and two who were going to stay. And I said, okay, one of the difficulties we have here is that why are your two characters are going to get involved in a range war of a herd they haven't driven from Texas to Wyoming? Why would they care? And we actually came up with some reasons and we were going to work it out. And they had their final encounter with a glom, which is a multi-zombie. It's like five zombies stuck together and it's very tough. And the designers of the encounter, the designers of the campaign, John Goff, the guy who wrote it, I'm fairly sure his expectation was that the players were going to kite the glom, set some dynamite because they were trying to blow up a bridge, and then leave the glom, glom there and try to blow up the dynamite and blow up the glom. My players had the idea that they wanted to blow up the glom, but they, instead of kiting it, they tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this thing and fight it in melee, which is like what it's good at. It had really sick high toughness, like 15 toughness, 14. Um... Bonuses to recover from being shaken. Oh, there's a boss. It had all kinds of uh, resistances to things, and it did a massive amount of damage. And so um, the uh, we almost had a TPK, which is a total party kill. Two of the characters died. One was the gunslinger, who's planning to be swapped out anyway. And one was the new girl. I keep calling her a new girl, but she's been with us for years, who wasn't planning to change characters. You see why this said you might need friends, because that's a pretty tough guy, and now he has turned into a zombie, or no, sorry, uh, a wolf. But, as you can see, because we're a brute and our fury is up, and we have good resistances to this stuff, we're fine. Might need another bit of defense here, but we're okay. But this guy is pretty tough for a single boss. It's more like... Acting more like an elite boss. Pretty cool. We're going to get double XP for him, I think. Because we already got XP once. It's 12,000. We're going to get another probably 12,000. 14. So that was 26,000 XP just for defeating one guy. Pretty awesome. Um, anyway. We had a near TPK. Uh, my best friend's character went down. Took four wounds. Went down. Was. But he... Survived the vigor roll to avoid bleeding out. So uh, he just had an a temporary injury. The other two failed their first vigor roll. They got permanent injuries. So they permanently lost like uh, D6 in strength or vigor, or whatever. And then because of those, the lost vigor and, and the wound penalties when their time came up to see if they could stabilize from bleeding out. Oh boy. Um, they, uh, they failed. And they, you know, they tried using bennies and all the typical stuff, but, um, but yeah, they, they didn't make it. And so, uh, unfortunately, two of the player's characters died, and one of them is one of the ones that was playing to stick around. So I said, okay, now we're in a position where three out of the four player characters are, um, switching up. And none of them are really going to have a reason to want to stay with the ranch, and also uh, he didn't transform. I guess he was stunned, so that's why he didn't transform. Uh, and uh, to stay with the ranch and everything, and we, we know, we've got only one person who's really associated with the ranch anymore, and why would these three new people be chosen to work with this one veteran instead of having the veteran ranch hand work with the other ranch hands? Who shot me? Could have been that guy. Who shot me? Is it somebody up here? I don't know. 
Um, so we're actually going to just abandon the rest of the blood drive and uh, leave dirt water and go to Headstone Hill. But man, I have to tell you, this is the first character deaths our group has had. We went through a you know, two and a half year D&D campaign that I ran, a six month D&D campaign that my best friend ran, a uh, two or three month D&D campaign that one of the other guys, the guy who was playing the gunslinger, uh, was in. And then we've been playing Deadlands for, oh, ten months. And so far nobody has died. Characters have come close, but nobody has died. And today we had three characters get incapacitated, and basically all three of them were in death saves, to use D&D &D terms, and two of them failed. Uh, because you basically only get one death save. Uh, you you kind of get two. But because you're at penalties, because you're wounded, it's very tough. By the way, a lot of people don't like this about Savage Worlds, and, or systems like this. They call them, um, oh gosh, what's the word for it? Not Snowball. But the idea is that, that you're, lo you're, you know, the losing... I can't, I'm drawing a blank on what you call it, but Death Spiral, that's it. Right, with the idea being that you take a wound, now you're at minus one to everything you do, including Vigor Rolls to soak the next wound. You take another wound, now you're at minus two to everything you do, including Vigor Rolls to soak the next wound. You take a third wound, now you're dying, and you're at minus three to save from the dying. Right, to save yourself from dying. So it's this Death Spiral. Now... Uh, my best friend's character didn't die, in part because uh, he made his vigor roll not to start bleeding out, but also because then he was standing right next to the one character that didn't ever get incapacitated during the battle, and that's the healer, uh, the Blessed, and the Blessed just healed him up. But unfortunately, the, you know, they made a, a couple of big mistakes in the camp in that encounter. One of them, and the player of the Blessed realized it afterwards, is she used a barrier to try and trap the thing, and it was just too strong for the barrier. And she wasted a lot of power points. Now, she couldn't have known that it was going to be that strong. However, she has a different power that she typically uses when they're facing undead called Holy Symbol. And with Holy Symbol, they have to make a spirit roll to even attack you if, you're, if they're in the radius of the Holy Symbol. They have to make a saving throw, uh, like a, uh, a spirit roll, almost the equivalent of a saving throw to um, to be able to advance into the um, what do you want to call it the field of the of the symbol right and so um, if she had just put that up it's possible that that thing wouldn't have been able to attack as many times as it did it's likely that it wouldn't have been able to attack as many times as it did and um, that would have probably saved at least one life and possibly both. Right? So unfortunately, they focused, they tried to focus on physically assaulting this thing that's basically the one thing you can't do to it because it's a bunch of dead bodies glued together. And, um, yeah, how do you kill corpses? They're already dead. So, um, uh, unfortunately, they made some bad decisions and it was really those bad decisions that led to the deaths of the characters uh, the one the one character was fatigued because he crit failed his vigor roll because he stayed up all night I can't remember he said I think he stayed up all night because he was upset that the girl that he proposed to on the on the blood drive the the daughter of the rancher she said no to his marriage proposal, and he was very upset. He stayed up all night, and I said, okay. Um, and so everybody said, oh, he's he's fatigued now, isn't he? And I said, no, you get to make a vigor roll. For every 24 hours, you have to make a vigor roll at minus one per 24 hours, I think it is, to see if you can stay awake and not be fatigued. So he, made his, he went to make his vigor roll, and he crit failed it. So that gave him two fatigue. But he had the fatigue because as a role player, he made the decision that my character is going to stay up all night and you know, cry over this lost girlfriend. So that's a good role play decision. I'm not criticizing it. And he's awesome in that he is more than willing to accept whatever consequences accrue to his character over the role play decisions that he makes, which is, by the way, how everybody should play role playing games. Um, and so, yeah, he, uh, so he was already had minus two fatigue. 
So he had minus two to everything he did, and then he failed his fear roll, and it was a fear roll at minus four because they're in a fear area, and the thing is a fearful creature, so they, the thing gave them minus two, and the area they were in gave them minus two. So they were all at minus four, two of them failed their fear check, and he ended up with a phobia, a major phobia against the thing that caused the fear. So now he's fighting this thing, and in Savage Worlds, if you are trying to fight the thing you have a phobia against, if it's a minor phobia, you're minus one to everything you do against it, and if major phobia, it's minus two. So now he's minus two for the fatigue, minus two for the phobia, and then when he got the first hit that got him, that wounded him for two wounds, he was at minus two for the wounds. So now he's trying to attack this thing, and he's at minus six. Right? But as a role player, he said, I don't think my character is going to be smart enough not to attack it. He's at this point, he's just in a panic and he's just he's just trying to kill the thing. And so, um, yeah, he uh, he is a great role player. And that's that's kind of what you should do. Right. He's he didn't try to min max the combat and say, OK, well, I'll pull, a, uh, you know, I will instead of attacking the thing, I'll try to, you know, support my allies so I don't have the minus two. Right, because he could still support his allies, just not directly interact with it, I think, to get the minus two. I'd have to check the hindrance. Um, but no, he said this character, this is what he would do. And so he role played it that way, and it ultimately led to the character's death. And the other player, she ran she has a gun and she was shooting at the thing and it wasn't very effective, so she and I kept asking him, do you guys want to try to make call shots here? And they were like, no. I'm like, yeah, okay. They it says in the book if they take the time to look, it has five heads. They can make notice rolls as an action to see if they can tell which head is the main head. And then if you strike the main head, you get bonuses. And if you can take out the main head, you can take the whole thing out. You don't have to. It could take five wounds, this thing, right? So they never wounded it once. They shook it once. My best friend's Chi Master shook it. But they never wounded this thing. You had to do 18 damage to wound it. That's tough to do in Savage Worlds. And they also rolled pretty badly. So uh, that was another one of the issues that they were having problems with some of their rolls. And so, uh, yeah, the, um, so anyway, she got, she, I guess she figured, okay, the guns aren't working. She could see that. So she tried to, she moved up. So you have to be within uh, three squares. She has a lariat, so she tried to lasso the thing. And she actually succeeded in entangling it. But the problem with entangle is that it's a strength roll to break out, right? Well, this thing had like D12 plus one strength. That's really easy for it to break out of entangles. You know, the idea is, yeah, she's very good at roping it, but it's just a rope. And you have a 10-armed, five-bodied zombie that thing is probably going to just snap the rope. And it had already snapped a 12 toughness barrier, right? And so it was able to get out of the entangle the next round, which was unfortunate. And then because she had tried to entangle it, it stepped forward and... <laughs> and she took five wounds. And she was able to, like, soak one. But one still gives you four wounds, so it put her on the ground. And then she made her vigor roll and failed it, and then... Um, that means you're bleeding out, and then she made her bleeding out vigor roll. If you can stabilize, you're okay, and she failed it. So it says, if you fail that second roll, the character perishes. So I said, unfortunately, and she said, nope, guess my character died, because she was out of Benny's. I think she did one re-roll, and it failed, and I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, unfortunately, your character didn't make it. And, and my best friend was like, wait. Well, the first time it happened, he's like, wait, they're dead? And I said, yes. He's like... Not dying, dead. I was like, yes. Like, yes, mister, I don't feel like there's any risk of death, in, any more risk of death in Savage Worlds than there is in Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Once you bleed out and you fail your vigor roll, you have died. Um, there's no, like, there is a resurrection power in uh, Savage Worlds, and I think Blessed do get access to it, but I think you have to be heroic. So this steamer trunk has the, the seed of the dark. So I think this is the end of this um, of this story arc. Now, why am I doing this? Because these things often explode. Uh, all right, I'm not waiting 14 seconds. We'll just take the damage. Yeah, we took some damage, but we got that. So now we have to find Bentley. Now, I don't know if we might have to do another mission to find him. He might not be in here. Oh, no, there he is. It looks like that's him. Yeah. 
Wow, there's multiple enemies on this guy. That's weird. Um, so yeah, the two of the characters died, and then... Um, so it looks like we've got three... We're going to have three new characters. Although, uh, the one guy said, can I do an epilogue at the end? Because it was like halfway through the session, and then when we came back, that's when I said, okay guys, what do you want to do? Do you want to still play in dirt water or do you want to move on and the consensus seems to be that they're going to move on and he said well can i do an epilogue and so they had ordered stuff from the smith and robards catalog his characters stuff had come in at dirt water in the post office and so um i don't know have we fought ulir yet i don't know where haven't we been um So what he said was, um, can you guys just bury... So they never found his body. He said he, he kind of narrated that his character's body just was carried downstream. And after everything was over, my best friend said, can we go and look for their bodies? And I said, well, you find uh, the one girl who's, you know, the, la the one who used the lariat. But I said, I think the other guy, you wanted your character to have washed downstream, correct? And he said, yeah, I don't want his body recovered. So we're okay, you, you find... He said, you find his guns. I'm like, okay, they found his guns. Right, which is kind of cool. So they buried his guns, and he uh, he said, "I want them to bury." He was he said, "I'd prefer if they buried the stuff I ordered from Smith and Robard." So he buried it. They buried it, and um, so what he said for his epilogue is that late late one night, maybe a couple of nights late, a week later, in the in the in the dark of the new moon, um, you see a pale figure, and his pale hand like a clo a dark cloaked figure and his pale hands dig up the grave and they dig up the the guns and they dig up the um the other items that he got and one of them was like a, a duster a, a rattler duster and he puts it on and um and then you see him ride off like walk off into the night so this idea is that you know his character is sort of still out there i have no i hope we don't have to auto complete this finale i have no idea where Ulir and his guards are I feel like we missed somebody in one of these rooms. Remember, I thought I was being shot at and I couldn't find them. And I wonder if that's it. Um, so yeah, guys, I that's the first deaths of for this game group. The first deaths we've had since playing every other week since 2020, right? We're playing, playing four years this month. Uh, it's what, 200 weeks? Oh my gosh. 200 weeks. Playing every other week, we had some skips, but we've probably played about 90 sessions, and it is the very first time anyone had any characters have died. We've had dying and saved, right, Re revivified stuff like that, but we have not had an actual perma death of a character. I told a friend of mine, this friend of mine on Discord, he, he like I told him during the, our break because we they died and then we had the break, and I said let's take the break and then we'll come back and talk, and so we took our five minute break and. I got back early, so I switched into our our private Discord that he and I have, and said um, what happened. I just said, you know, two of the characters died, and he wrote back, "Dead, dead," as in really dead. And I didn't answer him right away because then I was running the session. But I went back and I'm like, "Yeah, dead, dead." They failed their vigor rolls when they got incapacitated and they bled out. And he was like, "Wow." And so then what he said was, "So." Um, oh, so then afterwards, and I told him this, my best friend messaged me privately. He DM'd me and said, I'm not sure I would have killed off the new girl's character. Do I hear a glowy? Shouldn't be a glowy. And I thought, well, I rolled in the open, right? I didn't cheat. But because I rolled in the open, I couldn't cheat, right? The damage was the damage I rolled in the open. But I said to him, she's repeatedly told me that it's okay with her if characters die. And in fact, what started the whole discussion of him saying, I haven't felt like we're any more at risk to die in Deadlands than we were in D&D, &D, was her saying that one of the reasons she didn't like high-level D&D after you get past 5th or 6th level is it feels like there's never any risk of dying, and she wants that. Right. So I said to him, oh, there he is. Um, I said to him, I have talked to her repeatedly, and she has repeatedly told me that she is o okay with her character dying. So, now, nobody likes it, right? She's not happy that her character died. Nobody likes their character dying. It always feels crappy. But 
what you recognize is that in the larger sense, it leads to a cool story and some cool opportunities for you to possibly play another character, right? And to um, invent a new character and you can, um, and there's our reward merits, you can uh, bring your character back, Harrowed. Now, it turns out it doesn't fit for her character, we decided, right? She, Her character is very much like in tune with the cattle and the animals and stuff. In fact, I even role played that as the cattle were crossing past the spot where she died, they all kind of looked at it and they, they mooed and they, they kind of looked a little lost because she used to talk to the cattle like they were people and she thought they were smarter than people and she was always among the cows rather than among the people. And so the cows miss her already and I think she kind of felt a little, you know, maybe got a little choked up at that, maybe. Uh, that's the end of the Path of Darkness, so we're going to try to finish this bar today. Um, so let's head to Euroboros and see if there's something for us to do in there. And we'll gain, we'll gain XP until we hit level 37. Um, you know, so I, I'm sure she wasn't thrilled that this happened, um... But when we talked about Harrowed, I said one of the problems with Harrowed is the animals know you're undead and they don't like it and they would shy away from you. And she said, yeah, I don't want to do that to this character, right? This character would be very upset if the cows weren't friendly to her. So she said, I don't want to do that. Whereas the other guy was like, Harrowed is cool. I, you know, he's, he's not sure. He, might, he said, I might bring Cody back as Harrowed. But he said, I think I might want to like do that later. Maybe if we run another campaign or something with different characters and have him come back that way or something like that. So I don't know, there may be, there may be an opportunity for him to switch characters for a session or two and bring his character back just to get revenge or something like that. So we'll see what happens, but I feel bad. I, I didn't want to kill off characters, but on the other hand, I think it's cool knowing that characters can die. And I like the fact that they now know characters, even seasoned characters who equivalent of 5th level D&D characters they can die and this is real, right? This this is real danger in this game it's not fake danger I kind of like that okay, so we've, let's look at 30 to 34, we didn't do the Unity Plague I'm not sure what Smoke and Mirrors is, but we didn't do the Unity Plague so let's go ahead and do it, this is, uh, this is Jenny Firkins, right? So I'll just do normal. I don't like doing time because it counts while you're offline. So if you ask for, like, try to do it in eight hours or something, and you do it in four or five actual hours, but you're offline for a while in between because you can't sit there for four or five straight hours, um, they uh, they charge you for it, basically, and you don't get the accomplishment. So we're just going to do it normally. And this is just to get some missions so that we can level up and... Uh, and then we'll probably end the episode, but let's see, how long have we been going? Yeah, 30 minutes, so uh, yeah, we'll we'll do this mission and then we'll end the episode. Where's the... Uh, huh. So yeah, guys, post your comments. Have you been in uh, a situation like that? I mean, I thought it was going to be a TPK, which is a total party kill. I really did. My best friend's character went down. Um, he was incapacitated. Then... Um, they got him up, and he had two wounds. Then the other guy took two wounds. Okay, we're, I'm like, this is bad, because they weren't setting the dynamite. And one, they had made the decision, because I told them as players, you can either choose to run the dramatic task in parallel or uh, and, and do the battle at the same time, or you can choose to fight the battle and then do the dramatic task. It's up to you guys how you want to do it, because it says that in the book. And so... I thought they, they pretty much were clear that they wanted to fight the thing first and then set the dynamite. And then one of the players, the player of the Blessed, she just said, you know what, I'm going to try to grab the dynamite and see if I can figure out how to set it. Because she said, I, I think we're going to need to blow up the dynamite to kill this thing. Right? She correctly interpreted that this thing was so tough after it had taken a bullet and just, like that did 11 damage and just wasn't hurt that they needed the dynamite to do the damage to it, but they couldn't just use the dynamite to kill it because they still needed to blow up the bridge. That was part of the assignment because there were ghosts that were anchored to that site by the bridge itself. They were fighting over the bridge, and to get rid of the ghosts, they had to uh, destroy the bridge, which destroys the anchor. Right, so they knew they had to do that, and so they had chosen to do the one thing first, and... Um, Fortunately, that player realized, no, we should probably try to do the, um, uh, 
we should probably try to do this, right, this part. And my best friend then played off of that, and he, he got a really good roll and managed to get a couple of tokens on the dramatic task to get things started. And then um, the Blessed got another really good roll and managed to finish it. Um, I actually did fudge a little bit. So what happened is the Blessed was spending Benny ran Conviction and kept spending bennies to keep the Conviction going. So in Savage Worlds, the way Conviction works is for one round, you add a d6 to every roll you make, which is awesome. It's, it's huge in Savage Worlds. It's really good. Um, and they all had Conviction from having accomplished the previous chapter. So she said, I'm going to trigger it. And then, she kept, then if you spend a Benny in subsequent rounds, you can keep the Conviction going. And it's just awesome. And so she had, she had done, oh, she had run out of bennies, and we had said, okay, the conviction's expired, but she forgot to turn it off. And I saw when she made the final roll, it rolled with the conviction. The system thought it still was running. And I could have said something, and I don't know if it would have finished the dramatic task for them, because it was just enough. She got a success with two raises, which is three tokens, and they needed three. There were six, and they needed three more because they had three. And I thought, okay, if I don't let this happen, they probably will be TPK'd. Because two of them were dead, and um, the, the Glom hadn't been hurt at all. Um, the other thing that I fudged a little bit was it said that during the battle, every round, somebody was going to randomly be shot by the... Um, the ghosts they were just firing across the river and they'll occasionally target and shoot and actually uh, the last two rounds I just quote unquote forgot that uh, in fact I think it was one of the ghosts that actually took out almost took out my best friend's character it wasn't the glom he was shot in the back by the ghosts um, so on the other hand I mean there were a couple things that I messed up so I was using uh, I wasn't using manual rolls of fighting rather than the weapon roll of the glom I can't remember why it was it wasn't working for me and i the first couple times i rolled it i forgot to subtract the minus two uh for the fact that it was a large size and it was fighting normal sized people so it was so big that it should have been minus two and the glom uh i mean the one hit it hit with multiple raises so that doesn't matter I'm not sure if it affected anything, but still, it wasn't taking the penalty it was supposed to. So I messed up there, so that's why I said, okay, well, I'll stop shooting at them with, you know, we all kind of forgot about it, and I remembered it, and I was like, ah, I'm just going to leave it. All right. But they definitely did not succeed at that dramatic task, technically, at the end, because they were running Conviction when it was supposed to have expired, and they should have still had one more token left. But I think they would have died if they hadn't... Um, if they hadn't uh, had that token. So, in any case, um, yeah, I was trying to help them, but I roll in the open, and I'm not going to help them with that. Right? If the characters die by die rolls, then they die. And, um, yeah, it was, it was quite the session. It, like I said, the first time, I can't remember the last time a player character... When I'm GMing, a player or a, not GMing, a player character has permanently died in uh, one of the role-playing games I'm running. It, it did never happen in Champions. I mean, we had characters die for story reasons, where the player asked me to have their character die off-screen and stuff like that. Yes, but we never had a character die to die roll. Player character die to die rolls ever in Champions. Ever, it never happened. Um, so the last time I remember it happening in a tabletop game that I was either in or running was when I killed off my own character in Rollmaster. Somebody, it was a, it was a very similar type thing in Rollmaster. You can open end, uh, much like exploding dice, and you can, um, it feels like there should be another elevator here. Oh, I see where, over this way. Um, you can uh, roll crits and stuff. And I threw, it was a freaking throwing star. That's all it was. Which is equivalent to throwing a dagger. So it shouldn't do a lot of damage. And I threw it, I had, the, I had him throw it at my paladin. Because I figured he can take it. He's wearing chainmail or plate mail armor. And um, the dang thing open-ended up. So I got like the equivalent of 150, which is max. 
It did a massive damage. It did like a, a an E crit or something. And then I rolled a 66 or a 100 on the crit chart, and the 66 or 100 are basically crit crits. And they're essentially, that's going to be at an E level crit, is going to be auto death. And it basically stopped this heart. Basically, the, the, uh, um, the throwing star it went right through his armor, armor, right through his ribs, and into his heart, and killed him in one blow. It was my own character that. Somebody else was playing for me, I think. I don't think I was playing him as an NPC, but he was part of the party since we were rotating champs. <laughs> that's the last one I remember killing by die rolls. And I was like, that's fine. I just replaced him with an arch arc mage, which had just... That class had just come out in Rollmaster Companion 3 or something, and I was dying to play it. It was a very cool, weird, but cool class. Hard to, hard to run well, but I, I enjoyed it. Um... That's the last character, and that would have been probably 1990 summer. Summer of 1990, or maybe summer of 91, but probably summer of 1990, which is, I think, the big summer where all of us were playing Rollmaster a lot. Because um, that was sort of after Champions ended, right around 1990, and, it, well, I didn't end. Other people were, we, like, ran one-shots and stuff, but that's what, that was the end of my long campaign. That went from 87... We did it summer of 88, summer of 89. And then summer of 90, we started playing pretty hardcore role master, and I was ro rotating in with the other GMs. And I'm pretty sure that's the last time I've actually had a character, when I was game mastering, die to, 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 to straight up fair die rolls in a role playing game. Come on over here, you guys. I don't want to chase you. We're very close to leveling here now, guys. One of these next few guys might do it. I don't think these things will, but... Yeah, what do we need here? Just like a couple... 10,000 or something? 3,000 XP. And we're getting... A couple thousand per guy. So, like, this room is going to level us. There's a scientist to rescue. How many do we have to rescue? Five. Let's see if we can get them all. And we've leveled up. We're now 37th level, folks. So we're going to fix our enhancements to the degree that we can. That's going to mean buying a few SOs, upgrade, well, upgrading a few SOs. The um, IOs don't change. We could probably upgrade them right here. But I might want to make a couple changes to what's in the various different slots. So let me take a look at that after we get out of the mission, rather than trying to do it in the mid middle of the mission. So anyway, yeah, let me know, guys, if you had any um, tabletop RPG permanent character deaths. Why is this showing orange to me? It's a level below me. Okay, this is weird. Can somebody explain to me why, since I'm now level 37, these things aren't blue? Oh, you know why? Because they were... Well, no, it should change colors, no? I mean, they were orange when I walked into the room, but doesn't it dynamically change colors? That's weird. Let's see what the next set of guys looks like. But level 36 is... Yeah, he's level 35 and he's yellow to me? Oh! Duh! I'm on a flashback! I'm a, such a dummy, I can't go above level 37 in the mission. Who, who noticed that? <laughs> and was yelling at your screen. You're in a flashback, you dummy. In fact... I don't know, can we actually do the leveling up while we're on the flashback? Because we're sidekicked down permanently until we finish the arc. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the rest of this arc with you guys live. I'm just gonna do it off screen and I'm gonna turn the XP off. So in a way it doesn't really matter. I was gonna do the leveling up with you guys, but I'm not sure it'll work.
I didn't think of that, you know, when I came into the flashback. That if we level up in the flashback, we still are going to stay capped at 35. Or 34. 34. Right, yeah, we're level 34. That's why they were still orange. And I should actually, now that I think of it, yeah, we should set the notoriety. It won't change this mission, but we should set the notoriety down to plus zero because we're on a flashback. Although, no. Now we should be all right. Because, um, yeah, it's level 35, right? This isn't, uh, isn't, we're not like level 15 where we lose all of our powers and stuff. We've got all our powers with us. Our level 35 power is hasten, and it, it lets you keep that for whatever weird reason. It shouldn't, but it does. Well, no, we're level, yeah, because we're level 34, and we didn't get hasten till level 35, but it kind of lets you, it, there's some lag to it where it lets you keep a couple of the powers that you got after the level your sidekick to. I don't know why. I feel like that's a change. I don't feel like it did that originally. So we still have four researchers to find. Anyway, back to, now that I understand what it's doing, back to what I was saying with role-playing games. Go ahead and post your comments. When's the last time you were a GM? And you ha uh, ended up killing out, you know, well, you don't, but you ended up presiding over the deaths of, of player characters at the table or in the Zoom. Uh, and when's the last time you had it happen to you? How did it work out, right? Did you, my players were fine with it, right? Uh, the one guy said, this was epic. I loved this. He thought it was really cool. He didn't mind that his character died at all. And I think he really likes the fact that it's dangerous in the Deadlands. Um, the new girl didn't necessarily say it was cool, and I think she's disappointed that she's not going to get to keep playing this character because she had some, you know, plans and ideas for it. Which I guess is why, probably why my best friend said, you, you know, I wouldn't have killed her character off. I, I think probably what he would say if we were in conversation, because it was just a quick private message, is he would have let her see how someone else handles character death first. So that the very first time she encounters character death in a in a role playing game isn't hers, right? But a different character, and that this would enable her to see how the other guys handle character death, and that it's not so bad, and their new character comes in and they're having fun and that sort of thing. And this way, when it does happen to her, it doesn't feel quite so bad. But you know, she seems okay with it. She's already talking to me about her new concept. I actually suggested to her that she might want to look into territorial rangers. I think Territorial Rangers are awesome. They have a lot of cool perks. And they have a couple of special edges. So they are sort of special. It's kind of almost like a pseudo-arcane background, but it doesn't include superpowers. And I think she really just doesn't want the complexity of dealing with both the build of a power character and also the powers themselves and the power points and everything. And I don't blame her. And also, everybody else in the group has an arcane background. There's a Blessed, uh, the Chi Master's being swapped out for a Hugster, but they're still both arcane backgrounds. And then the other character is either going to be a uh, weird sci a mad scientist or a um, uh, uh, witch. So I think she feels like, okay, that's enough of these like weird science and, and uh, powered characters. I don't necessarily want to make another one. So... Um, but the nice thing about the Territorial Rangers is they do get some perks and some cool, unique edges that are just for them. One of them is repeatable, so you can take it more than once, and you get additional perks as you take it. It's basically increasing your character's military rank within the Rangers, from Field Ranger to Sergeant to Lieutenant to Captain. And you can call it increasingly strong favors. You get some access to some additional knowledge, so... There's the Ranger's Field Manual is missing chapter 13. It skips from 12 to like 14 and then goes up to 20 or something. And the chapter 13 one is a secret one. So when you get to the rank of lieutenant or something, they hand you the real field manual with chapter 13 in it. And that's got all of the stuff about the reckoning and all of that kind of thing. Now, the player knows about it because we've role played about that stuff with this group. But, um, but that will give her character that knowledge and that sort of thing. So... I think it's a really cool character type. Um, there are so many awesome characters in Deadlands. If I ever got to play Deadlands, I don't know what I would do. Like Kid in a Candy Shop. I think the Hex Slinger Huckster is 
freaking awesome. That's what my best friend is. I think I'm. I think he would probably not agree because I don't think he enjoyed his Chi Master, and I don't think he played it the way. She only didn't play it the way I would have played it. But um, I love Chi Masters, and I'd be all over playing that. And I have to say, there's a part of me that would probably, if I was playing with my best friend and somebody else was running Deadlands, I would almost certainly pick Chi Master just to show him how I would do it and let him see that it's actually a lot more awesome of a character type than than he than he made it be, and that a lot of that just had to do with his build decisions, right? He he's very much into doing direct damage, my best friend, because that's what you do in D and D a lot. And even in D&D, you can be a crowd controller or whatever who doesn't do direct damage, but he still always seemed to prefer doing the direct damage. And even more so in Savage Worlds, you're better off sometimes not doing direct damage. And so I would have... And I also think he... The, you know, what you have to do with something like a, a powered character is decide are you going to focus on the powers. And if you do, then the powers should become substitutes for edges and skills. They do the thing, same things edges and skills do, right? But as powers that you pay points for and only last a little amount of time. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to focus more on edges and skills? And the powers will just be this little gimmick you do a little bit. Now, if it's me, if I'm going to do a martial artist with skills and edges, I wouldn't bother to take a chi master and use powers. I would just take the martial artist edge, right? But he tried to do both. He took the martial artist edge and some other stuff and skilled up, but he also tried to do powers. And I feel like it's sort of jack of all trades, master of none. So I would have gone a lot more powers with my character, and I would have picked different powers. The main one being boost trait. He did not take that, and that's pound for pound, one of the best powers in the game. Uh, point for point, pound for pound. It's a novice power, and it allows you to avoid. You, you know, you then don't have to take a bunch of skills because you can boost the skills when you need to. Uh, the other thing my best friend likes to do, because you can in Savage Worlds, is do multi actions. Right, so he's got something for his character that allows him to do... Um, is it me or did Focus just not trigger there? I'm going to have to check it. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, he, he likes to do... He bought some thing with his powers that allows him to do... With his edges that allows him to do... Um, to make two attacks and ignore the multi-action penalty for up to one extra attack action. Right, so you can do two attacks and take no multi-action penalty. And instead of doing two attacks, he does three things. He'll do like cast a spell, which is minus two to everything you do now because it's a triple action, and then do try to do two attacks because it's not penalized to do the second attack. But the first attack and second attack are being penalized by the fact that you tried to cast the smite power. So he casts smite minus two to it, fails it, and then he misses with both of his attacks or one of his one of his two attacks because he's minus two. And then he's like, oh, this character is so frustrating. Well, you're kind of doing it to yourself. I, I would have, instead, I would have made a character that boosted trait, and the and instead of uh, the other power he took was um, Relief. Nope, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, relief is, is a very lackluster power, in my opinion, and I don't know if he ever used it. Uh, I would have taken Sloth Speed, which slows enemies and speeds you up, and it gives you the ability to double your running and increase your run die. And if you get a raise on it, you also can do a run action, not just movement, but a full-on run action without taking any of the penalties for running. So it lets you basically do a free run action. It's awesome. So I would, you know, what I would probably do is boost trait, boost fighting, boost strength to do more damage, right? Instead of taking edges that do more damage and increasing your fighting die, I would have been increasing my power skill, focus, that increases your, that lets you, if, in, in, do your power, increase power points, and take in a bunch of the power-based edges and be a truly, like, magical monk. Um, sort of like in Rollmaster, there's the warrior monk, which is basically the physical martial artist, and all they have is martial arts skills. And then there's the uh, monk, which is which has, uh, which has is like a hybrid caster, and it's sort of like a semi-spellcaster, as they call it, and they do spellcasting as well as fighting and most of their fighting like if you look at their two hit charts and stuff their fighting doesn't really come from their skills it comes from the spells right you use the spells to enhance yourself so that you don't need the skills it's pretty cool so um gotta go to jenny ferkins now in founders falls let's go to her and i think we're gonna stop here 
Um, guys, what I'm going to try to do is not level up. I will do this flashback with XP turned off. And uh, where's the XP? Here we go. And then I will level up and do the actual enhancing when we come back. And we're ready to start the next set of missions. So anyway, yeah, guys, let me know uh, how you... Oh, so back, back to what I was saying. So I might want to be a Chi Master if my best friend was playing alongside me. Just... Did I go to the wrong place? I did. Just so that... Um, just so that he could see how a Chi Master could have played. On the other hand, I love Hexlingers. They're cool. I love Harrowed. They're pretty cool. Um, I also really like the Territorial Rangers. And I also like the Agents. They're awesome. And I also just like the idea of being a freaking gunslinger in the West, you know. So there are so many cool things to be in Deadlands. It's it's really a great setting. Oh, and also the Shaman, which is a very cool one. And the Witch, which, which comes in the Companion, is also very cool. Being like a Wichita Witch, very cool stuff. There are some really awesome background edges in Savage Worlds in, in Deadlands, so... Um, I will keep going with this story arc and just gaining influence and eventually reward merits. Let's take a look before we finish with at our merits. We're at 131, so we need about 470, 469 to um, go get our last, second and last set of ATO enhancers. And I'm not sure where I'm going to put that. Maybe we'll put that on total focus because we're going to use total focus a lot. Because that's our setup move. But we could put it on either of these two because we use those a lot as well. But we'll see what happens. Um, somebody mentioned crushing impact. And that's a fairly cheap set. And we may get that. I'm going to work on the ATOs first. And then as we get toward 40, we'll start trying to figure out sets. I, mean, I, I think kind of the first thing I want to try to do is get all of these into inventions. And the real struggle I'm having is I'm just not getting drops for those. There's no healing in here. We do have endurance reduction. Ah, so we can do this. We've got five. No, that's endurance reduction. I want endurance modification. Oh, one of these. So we can we can replace one of these uh, in our um, enhancers. We don't need recharge. We do need a couple of endurance reductions. We can do those. Uh, and then we're going to need health. So the main things we need are health, resistance, and accuracy right now. So we'll just see what drops. Now, nothing's going to drop, actually, while I'm um, on these missions, because you don't get in... Well, you get recipe drops, but they're too low a level. And this might be okay, because we're level 34. It might drop level 35s. When I was on the level 15 story arcs, it was dropping recipes for level 15s, and I just threw those out. But this should give us 30 to 35s, and I can slot those. So anyway, I'll let you know what happens when we come, or what has happened when we come back, and you'll see us level up to 37 and pick our slots, as long as I don't accidentally do it without recording it. Um, and you'll see that all when we come back and we've I've finished this flashback. So I, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to leave comments about your own experiences, if you've had any with uh, character deaths in role-playing games. And if you had a TPK, we've never had one. If you've had an actual total party kill, in your role-playing games, tell us the story. I want to hear that story, because that's or read it, because that's really cool. It's I, I, Why do I think it's cool? I don't know, but I think it's interesting. It's something that my group's never experienced, going all the way back to 1987. I, we had large numbers of party members die, but I don't think we ever had a complete party wipe. Usually what would happen is by the time most of us were down, the last couple people would run. So we've had, like, half the party die and the other half flee, but I don't think we've ever had a TPK. We've had total party knockouts, TPKO, in Champions, where the villains knocked us all out, captured us, and we had a breakout. Almost every one of us ran at least one of those over the years. But we've never had a total party actual kill where people died and the whole party died. Uh, I thought it was going to happen today, but it didn't. So if you have that story, tell us briefly, you know, give us a, give us a rundown. 
I find that really interesting, and if uh, people comment about that, I may reply to those and talk about those stories in uh, upcoming episodes. I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, I am Scrapperlock, and this has been City of Heroes.